the Gambia because corruption in the Gambia's uh, public sector is perceived to be very high, especially among the top levels in public institutions. However, President Adam Barro said on Friday that his government is setting up plans and policies to eliminate corrupt practices in his government. And let's have more details of that in this report. And, uh, Mr. President, there has been a couple of corruption activities in line with your government. Example, the fishery scandal. Do you think that uh, deploying the, the, the fishery ministry or the, the, the authorities involved in the scandal, the punishment is severe enough to fight against corruption in the country? These, these, are, these are isolated cases that have happened. It's unfortunate, but we have set up an inquiries. You know, in a democracy, it's not easy. If democracy was was easy, nobody will be will be encouraged to respect democracy. It's because it's difficult. If it is dictatorship, you can go and arrest people, jail them. Do you do that? But now you cannot do that. What you do is you follow due process. The due process is we have suspended the, the man concerned, the man who is accused. We are now uh, investigating. After the investigation, then the report comes. That's the time now we'll decide what to do. Our policies, our plans, to be part of our reforms is how to eliminate corruption. How do you eliminate corruption? You migrate to the e-system. All right, that's President Barrow uh, speaking there, and we apologize instead of a report, it's an insight where he was uh, responding to questions about level of corruption in the Gambia. And again, we will uh, return to Momodu uh, Savali uh, to uh, ask him about this. Savali, again, there, you, you had the, the president uh, saying his government is outlined policies to eliminate corruption. But do you think his government has done enough since 2017 today to fight against corruption in this country? Well, uh, you know, Baro just uh, confirmed what I said to you about how the system is treating him. That, you know, he doesn't understand the system and they're making sure he doesn't have the right information. So they go and give him misleading information. Baro is saying that because they have an e-system now, corruption is minimized. Baro did not implement anything new in this country. The e-system is talking about, I know it's the IFMIS, that's the Integrated Financial Management in Information Systems, that was brought in here by the Yame administration. It's nothing new. And let me tell you, uh, if anybody tells you that because of technology, corruption will be reduced, it's a lie. It's not true. Because computers don't think. They are machines. They, they, they program Geigo. If you put in garbage, they bring out garbage. Like the, the, this iPad I'm using, if I put in a, a, a voucher or well, like an invoice that the out, uh, in, uh, iPad is worth $100,000, is it is not. And you put it into the system, the system will accept it. And when I pay out 100,000, the system will say it's okay. So, does it make sense? It doesn't. Corruption has increased in this uh, administration. Corruption is actually has been legalized by President Barrow. I'm glad you guys raised the uh, issue of uh, Banja at fisheries. And what is he saying? Barrow is not even showing the nerve that he's going to do something. He cannot. Look at this ministry. This is the only ministry where the peers and the minister have remained there all along. They've not been moved. Why? And all fingers have been pointing at them. So the Chinese uh, uh, promised to bribe Banja. Baro cannot do anything to Banja because the Chinese, the first bribery of the Chinese in this country went, went to State House. Yeah, but and he said his government have set up an, 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 an inquiry to, to investigate into the matter. About that. No inquiry, nothing. So that's why he cannot do anything to the fisheries guy. This case will die. Take it from me. Because if Bangia goes, James Gomez has to go. And guess James Gomez is one of Barrow's pillars in this government. Nothing's going to happen. Correction is legalized. 35 million Kodole, the same 35 million company that gave that money to the First Ladies Foundation, is going to be given a now a contract worth $23 million when there are other companies that can do that work for $30 million. Yeah, but President, Pre Sab Sabali, President Barrow is saying in our mainstream media houses right now. Yeah, Pre President Barrow is saying that when somebody is accused, I, I know you are so much concerned of these issues, and of course, as I can see that. But he is saying that if somebody is accused, uh, due process have to be followed. That things have to be investigated. We are not in a you know dictatorship, whatever where you can go and arrest people and jail them like that. You need to investigate and follow what's been whether what has been said of the person is true or not.
That's why probably Mr. Well, Branja is, was set on leave. First, uh, this is not the first incident of corruption in this country. He is investigating uh, Banja. Why is he not setting up an, an inquiry into the the alleged uh, money laundering activity that happened into the accounts of the first lady that led to the resignation of people like Fatin Baji and other board members of that institution? This is not the first time these kind of things are happening. And that's why I am saying nothing is going to happen in the Banja case. The Banja case, he just acted because the things went out of control. These audios were circulating everywhere. And nobody could deny success successfully that this was Banja. All right. Now, of course, it was reported yesterday that the United States has also raised concern about the level of corruption uh, in the Gambia. Absolutely. Now, how, how do you think the government will receive this, this news or these such concerns? Yeah, it, it's really alarming that a sitting diplomat in a country can poke his nose into the affairs of a country to the point of accusing the government of corruption. And, and the ambassador is right. It's true. And, and, I, and I made a post on Facebook when I saw that story on the standard. I said perhaps, the, um, because the ambassador specifically spoke about procurement. And procurement is the biggest vehicle for corruption in this country. So I said maybe the ambassador is, knows about this 35 million that went into the first lady's account and that the, there is a procurement process that's going to award a contract to the company that sent this 35 million into the first lady's account. It's really, I mean, it's, it's a, such a, an embarrassment for the borough administration. And are you surprised that Tangara is quiet about this? There is no response from the foreign ministry. Silence means consent. That's my conclusion. They agree that what the ambassador is saying is true of this government. Now, who do, who do you think are those people who are misleading the president on the, uh, you know, on, on how things are happening or unfolding in this well, country? The, gang of, the mafia gang that he has appointed, that includes Mambu Renjai and Bailamin Job and other ministers, who we know are, are directly involved in, in procurement uh, malpractice openly in this country. All right. Now, again, uh, on the same issue that many people are talking about the rampant of corruption in, the, in, in a small country, and of course in a small and poor country like, like the Gambia, uh, would this in any way um, taint Gambia's image internationally? Probably, I mean, the world would be watching and following how events are happening. Well, our image is tainted already, but I'm not even bothered about our image. What I'm bothered about is about the, the, the poverty uh, and malnutrition in this country. The joblessness of our young people. You're awarding a contract, and now a contract at a premium of nine million dollars. What can nine million dollars do if you save that and give it to the lowest bidder? You can transform lives through this nine million. So for me, it's not a question of image. It's about how our people are suffering, not having access to drinking water. People don't have even access to something as basic as recreation. I heard Baros Minister promising a stadium in Nyamina when his own Pagi Jola opposite his house is like a, a swimming pool for, for frogs. A government that cannot even give a, a recreation facilities to its young people is looting the country broad daylight. This is a tragedy of the highest order for a government that came on the back of young people who sweated and, and faced a, a, a dictatorship that could have taken their lives. All right. That's, that's quite interesting. Of course, you said you are not that much concerned about the international uh, world, probably how they would view the country if people are talking about you know, the level of corruption and all that. But the international partners who are supporting Gambia in many uh, developmental issues and programs would be you know, equally concerned. Would that in any way affect the country or the government's relations with those partners? Well, let, let, me, let me tell you one thing that nobody will tell you in this country. You know, you guys, you overrate these international development partners. Some of them are as corrupt as our governments or even more corrupt than our governments. Yeah, but then... It's not that, it, about to be called, but that uh, may be the reality, the but then... The Did you hear me or are you trying to disagree with me? Yeah, I was just saying that because I, I said that because they are, you know, as you may know, they are pumping a lot of millions in this country in as much as they might be corrupt or whatever. Is that you are assuming that they are clean. They are not. Some of these institutions are as corrupt as our government or even more corrupt. That's what I'm telling you. And I'm giving an example of this now a contract for the modernization and improvement of electricity that, that they are doing with the World Bank. They are awarding a contract at a premium of $9 million with no due diligence on the company that's linked to the First Lady and, and, and the Presidency. And the World Bank is keeping quiet about this. There are institutions, I don't want to mention names. At some point, uh, certain project officials were arrested, and we knew they were corrupt. But the international organization funding that project, they said they will stop funding unless these people are reinstated. What I am telling you, 
And I'm sure you are shocked, and many viewers will be shocked. Some of these institutions like World Bank, African Development Bank, UN, at the headquarters, they are even more corrupt than our government. That's what I'm telling you. And that's why I'm saying I'm not bothered about the image of the country. What I'm bothered about is how the poor people of this country are going to lose money that could have impacted their lives and transformed them. We can't wait for these outsiders to tell us what to do or to transform our country. It's not going to happen in a billion years. All right. Um, well, again, you were saying this. Um, are you not alleging that um, you are talking about this organization are corrupt? Do you have facts of this? If someone may ask, Sabali is saying that this well, is another organization. I just gave you examples. We, we know uh, projects that are filled with corrupt. Almost all projects in this country, 95% are all corrupt. But the institutions funding these projects, if you touch any of those project managers, they will go after you. They will stop the funding. And we know that some of the funds that are coming into these project man managers, part of the funds go back to the desk officers at the headquarters in Washington, D.C., in New York, in, in, in Abidjan. We know these things, but nobody will talk about it because they are afraid of talking. Okay, now talking about talking about you know um, corruption and of course the uh, barrel-led government and all that. But then uh, one might say also corruption has been here well before barrel or even Jame, if I may say. But then uh, what do you think really is the problem? Is it about the leadership or the system or what? Or you know Gambia as a country? I mean, well, uh, yes, corruption has been here not only during the Jame era. Uh, corruption uh, was institutionalized in this country during the Jawara administration, and you guys, for some reason, you, you tend to try to forget that. It's Jawara who institutionalized it here by keeping a blind eye, and Jame took over. Jame, I believe, he sincerely wanted to root out corruption. But I'll tell you what the problem is. Uh, they accuse government officials and politicians. I think the business people are the most corrupt people in the whole world because they are the people who come and show these neophytes in government how to, how to loot the state. Some of the corrupt institutions that were in the Jame administration came in and found a way of penetrating the Jame administration. And those same corrupt institutions are now in state house dealing with Baro. Some of these business people, they showed Baro how, how to loot the country. So it's a complex problem between the government, the business people, and even the political grassroots who sometimes go to the people in power and demand for certain things that really, naturally, should not be available given the poor, poor salaries these public officials are paid. So it's a complex problem. And that's why more often than not, when people tell me, how do we solve the corruption problem, I tell them I don't have an answer. Perhaps one day people are going to fear God. Maybe that's going to, only going to be the solution. Well, no matter how big the reforms you implement in government, it will only limit it. It will never eliminate it. This is the unfortunate reality, and I'm not here to sugarcoat the truth or to tell you certain things so that you think somebody is smart, he has the solutions. I don't have the solutions. All right. I mean, interesting. Now, um, of course, I know finally on the issue, um, you know, as you just highlighted, if these things are anything to go by, then um, I, do you think we would be any time soon saying goodbye to corruption in this country? And on your personal opinion or view, yeah, I was just asking Not what do you think is doing out? Soon. But I think what, would, what could help is if we have a leadership that's educated and wise enough. The problem with Baro, he doesn't have the academic pedigree, if I may call Dr. Sise. Uh, he's never worked in the public service. Uh, he doesn't have that natural uh, uh, instinct to be able to detect stuff. This is real. I mean, even Baro's supporters know these things. They're just w finding ways of means of uh, perhaps breaking the mafia cabal around him or maybe getting better people. But no, Baro himself cannot even digest some of these complex issues. A more educated, more savvy, more patriotic leader maybe could have an impact on the level of corruption. And let me tell you, even this anti-corruption commission that you guys are talking about is not going to make any difference. They have a, an anti-corruption commission in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is not less corrupt than the Gambia right now. I can tell you that for free. And then even that anti-corruption commission, whose bill is even yet to go to, uh, to the National Assembly, I know somebody who has been identified to head it, and he's not clean, and he's already in the system aiding and abetting corruption. I am telling you, these things, you know, you think talking about this on Facebook is going to change anything? No. I repeat, a more educated leader, intelligent, who knows about the system, and who is perhaps a little bit brutal enough to, to draw the line and show that there will be consequences for bad behavior. Perhaps that would help. 
Yeah, the way you're talking, if you're talking about someone who's brutal, people might be thinking about Hobby, he's not talking about, I'm not a dictator again. In this country, I mean, well, uh, Saval. Uh, let, let me tell you one thing. Uh, I am telling you, democracy has its limits. I think one of the problems we have in this country right now, and I'm not advocating a, a Yaya style administration. No, I'm not. But a borough type administration too will not cut it. I heard Baro saying he's tolerant, and yes, he's tolerant. But there are limits to tolerance. Even God has, God has held fire for those people who misbehave. So this excessive laissez-faire attitude is going to ruin this country. We need a leader who is strong. Did I say we need a real re leader who will abuse people's lives? No. But you need to be strong to draw the line. Right now, Gambia, nobody has been fired for corruption in this country. Never. No. So what's going to happen? People will feel that it's like free chop. Practically, that's what they are saying in their offices. Okay. Help yourself. Yeah, just finally, uh, Savali, uh, before we, we let you go, uh, just finally, what do, what do you think is the way out? What's the way forward um, in all these issues that we are talking about? Just finally, how can we take ourselves as a country from this thing mm. we, have, we, we have been talking about since in the morning to now? <laughs> I know you will not like what I'm saying. I can already read your sentiment barometer. The way out is to kick Adam Abaro and his incompetent, clueless, corrupt government out of state house and institute a government that's educated enough, savvy enough, patriotic enough, and serious enough to point a, a carrot to Gambians, but to also wield a big stick. So people know that there are consequences for good behavior and there'll be retribution for bad behavior. That's the only way this country can move forward. We are in wrong hands. Mamoudou Sabali, we have to thank you very much for your time and it was good to have you on the line this morning to talk about this. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.